Well, the Clintons are a professional political family, that's for sure, and in public they appear to get along well with the Obamas. But behind closed doors, it's a different story when it comes to Hillary Clinton and the Commander-in-Chief. Ed Klein is the author of the new book, Blood Feud, The Clintons versus the Obamas. He joins us now. Ed, nice to see you this morning. Great to be here. Thank you. Some explosive revelations in this book, of course, and controversial comments. How confident are you in your sources on, on this book? Uh, very confident. I've been doing this for about 10 years following the Clintons. I wrote a book in 2005 called The Truth About Hillary. I've written books about Obama. My uh, Rolodex is as long as my arm, and no one has come forward to challenge anything in this new book, wow. Blood Feud. So you've got a great quote, uh, amazing quote here from Hillary Clinton. Don't know where it came from, but I love it. She says this about Obama. Obama has turned into a joke, she said sharply. The IRS targeting the Tea Party, the Justice Department's seizure of the AP phone records, and James Rosen's emails. All these scandals. Obama's allowed his hatred for his enemies to screw him the way Nixon did. Obama, who was, in her words, incompetent and feckless. That's a harsh judgment. It's a harsh judgment, but this is from inside the Obama administration where she saw him at work yes. day in, day out. And she and Bill think that this guy is an inexperienced, over-his-head president who really doesn't know what he's doing. I mean, they said that on the campaign trail. I mean, Hillary Clinton said as much on the campaign trail before that he was ever elected president. I want to get your uh, comments about this next uh, piece from your book on Benghazi. Um, and Bill Clinton's comments about Benghazi, he said, that story won't hold up, Bill said. I know, Hillary then said. I told the president that. It's an impossible story, Bill said. I can't believe the president is claiming it wasn't terrorism. Then again, maybe I can. It looks like Obama isn't going to allow anyone to say that terrorism has occurred on his watch. I know, and that uh, conversation took place when Hillary was at the State Department during the attack on Benghazi, it was still going on, and Bill was in Little Rock in his luxurious penthouse apartment at top of his uh, library. And they discussed the possibility of her resigning as Secretary of State and decided that if she did that, it might actually hurt Obama's chances of getting reelected and the Democratic's, Democratic Party would never forgive her and it would hurt her chances in 2016. Okay, and you say a deal was done on the campaign trail leading up to the 2012 election. Bill Clinton supporting President Obama. In return, Obama would have to say Hillary Clinton is the one for 2016. Here's another excerpt I want to share. Bill says Obama's looking for a mini-me instead. He's saying, recently I've been hearing a different scenario from state committee men. They say he's looking for a candidate who's just like him, someone relatively unknown, someone with a fresh face. He's convinced himself he's been a brilliant president and wants to clone himself to find his mini-me. So you're saying the deal may not actually Well, the deal, done. no. That, well, Bill came through with the deal when he made that great speech. But not done with, with spit, like a dental <laughs> That's deal. That's right. But Obama never did come through. And Obama does not really want to see the Clintons in the White House because if they get it two for the price of one, naturally, but both Bill and Hillary, that means Obama is no longer the head of the Democratic Party, and he can't continue to yeah. pursue his goal of turning America into a European-style socialist state. But their ideals so, are different. You've, you've got a couple really revealing scenes in here, that, and I have heard people who know Obama say the same thing. When he's with former presidents, for example, President Clinton or Michael Bloomberg, former mayor of New York, he never asks them That's a right. single That's question. Right. That's right. Bloomberg said, I spent four hours on the golf course with this guy. I was under consideration for maybe replacing the Secretary of Treasury. And he never asked me anything about the economy wow. or anything else. When writing this book, what was your biggest takeaway, your biggest revelation, the thing that shocked you the most? I interviewed Vernon Jordan, who has uh, uh, been a Democratic counselor to presidents for years and years. And right. he said in this interview that this president may be having trouble with the Republicans, okay, that's what the Republicans are there for, they're the opposition party, but he was elected to lead and he's not leading. Whoa. And do you think there's any chance he would say that if the Clintons didn't want him to? He's Bill Clinton's best friend. Yeah, that's exactly right. Wow. Unbelievable. Ed Klein, the book, Blood Feud, The Clintons versus the Obamas. Super interesting. Number three on Amazon this morning. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much. For I wonder me. if after this interview it'll be number one on Amazon. Ed, great to see you this morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, can you hear me now? We've got a new way to make sure Congress really listens to your complaints and you don't have to wait for the next election. And Daniel Radcliffe, Harry Potter himself, under fire for saying men shouldn't be friends with women. Mm -hmm. But is he right? Our panel is here to weigh in on this and much more. Uh, yeah.
I'm going to mess that up on air. I thought you didn't believe men and women could be friends. When did I say that? On the ride to...